person say, I am getting my breakthrough today. Seven person, I am getting my breakthrough today. Make sure you stand up. Don't sit down and suspect your breakthrough is happening. I am getting my breakthrough today. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Have your seat. Someone talk with me to the second king chapter five. I need a fast reader. Second king chapter five. Verse one to fourteen. Fast reader. Now, that man, captain of hosts of the king of Syria. Can you give me my place? Now, that man, captain of hosts of the great Syria, was a great man with his master, and honor, and honor able, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in Valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive, captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto his mistress, Would go, my lord, bear with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him, him of his leprosy. And, and one went in and told his lord, saying, Thus and said the maid, that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten chains of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have there will send Nama my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore, wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so. When Elisha, a man of God, had heard, the, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore, Wherefore hast thou rent thou clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall come, that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horse, his horses, and with his chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was bought and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me, and it's time, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand off over the place, and recover the leper. And not, and not Abana and Fafa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel, may I not wash in them, and be clean? So he turned and went away in, in a rage. And the servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee, do, same, do some great thing. Wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he returned to the man of God and he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is God, and in all earth, but in all Israel. Therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servants. Hallelujah. I tied my message. Answer to a question mark. Hallelujah. Say question mark. Question mark. 
There are people that have question mark in their life. The Bible said Nehemiah was honorable. He was a captain. Imagine a captain, very brave man, very handsome, good looking, honorable, very brave. But still, yet, there's a question mark in his life. You see a man walking, you see a man glittering, handsome. And I see the man, you admire him, but at the end of the day, there is a question mark. You see someone driving a big car, you see someone carrying a costless car, you admire it. You see a lady very beautiful, look like Angel, but they have one. There is what? Look into your life. We have a single question mark in your life. I believe there are people that have a question mark in their life. This man is doing what is doing great. But when a statement is made, and at the end you see but question mark. But there is a 
a question mark. In my marriage, question mark. The Bible said, Never the captain of the host of the king of Assyria. He was a great man, hungry. Because by him the Lord had delivered unto Syria and was a mighty man of Babylon. What is that? Man who stands as a defense, man who has breath, man who can fight for, man who can stand. For nations, mighty man of valor, man who are great. You see great men when they stand. You know that this man is a great man. But still, yet there is a a question mark. The Bible said that no man was a great man, but yet he was a leper. I want us to look into what are the significance of leprosy. When they say a man is leper, or when they say a man has an issue of leprosy, leprosy is a shame, a poor shame, disgrace. A leper man, a that cover his skin with cloth. He cannot expose his skin. No wonder you can see a great man, you can see a beautiful lady, you can see a well admirable person that they cover their cloth, they use it to paint all their face, paint all their body, they dress with the latest fashion that you don't know who they are. You don't like someone, you and you see someone carrying a car that is tinted. The car is running. The car is so beauty. Then you don't know who is inside the car. You see a container, but you don't know the content. Come on, yeah. Neymar was in this situation. A container without knowing the content. Let me see. This is significant. Leprosy signifies disgrace and shame. In other words, according to the law of the Jews, when you are a leper, they will call you unclean. And anywhere you are passing, you will be shouting, Unclean is coming. Unclean is coming. Unclean. You will be shouting. Unclean. Everybody will be going away from you. People will be running away from you. A leper man cannot attract favor at all. A leper man cannot attract friends. A leper man cannot attract connection. Or a leper man. Any man that have leprosy, they will cast him out from the city. <laughs> a leper man is a man of rejection. You can never be in the midst of those that are celebrating. Even though say the Bible says rejoice with those who are rejoicing, not with those who are mourning, but you are totally being separated. No matter who you are, no matter how, what, what position you are called occupying, a leper man cannot attract favor. In other words, you chase away favor. That is the question mark in the life of Nema. Now, in your life, what are the question mark in your life that prevent favor of God, that prevent connection, that prevent the God, that prevail every good things that God has proposed for you. What are the question marks in life? 
question mark. The significance of leprosy. Someone that's on play, number one point. Someone that should be isolated. You have to be isolated, separated from people. When you are being isolated from people, automatically you are being disconnected. You are no more connected to favor. Because when God went to favor, a man, God will send a man. True. True. When God went to favor, you God will send somebody. Now you are being separated and isolated from the ways of people. How am I going to try the favor? Question mark. Your question mark can disconnect you from the word of God. It can disconnect you from connection. If you are going through spiritual question mark, today God has an answer. Yes. I say God has an answer. Yes. I say there is an answer for every question mark in your life. Leprosy was incurable by men. There are issues in your life, there are questions in your life. Even though you go to professors, you go to those who are advisors, you go to counselors, you can never get a solution. Leprosy, no doctor can cure leprosy. Leprosy is incurable by men. Hallelujah. Leprosy is incurable by people. There are question marks in your life. Your friend can never give you solution. No man can give you solution. But God can give solution. Amen. God is the only one that will pronounce today to leprosy. That is why they will banish the person from the land. Because it's an incurable disease, it's an incurable affliction. There are many question marks in your life. You have been to many places, nowhere you could get a solution, get an answer. But God has an answer. I said, God is a God of supernatural power. I said, God is a God of cure diseases. God cure sickness. God cure leprosy. No one could cure it, even physicians, native doctors. Nobody could cure leprosy. A leper man is incurable. But the God can cure it. I don't know what disease you are having. I don't know the sickness you're having. I don't know the problem you're having. That look like a leprosy. And you are being to many places. You are being to doctors. You are being to physician. You are being to men to seek for advice, to seek for cancer. You are being to so many places. And you could not get solution. There is solution here today. Amen. You have a question mark in your relationship, your marriage. Nobody who don't talk would not give you that sound. Hallelujah. Don't talk would not give you an answer. God is giving you an answer. I said God is giving you an answer. That person might be alive, God is giving you an answer. I said that person might be I said God is giving you an answer. I said there is an answer. Jeff has said there is an answer.
there is answer. Then number 20 point, leprosy was not a respecter of any man. Now look, you can see a rich man carrying the most expensive car, still yet has a, a question mark. So now leprosy is an affliction and it has no respect to any man. Whether you are a millionaire, whether you are a millionaire, and the most bad and the funniest part is not something that money can cure. Hallelujah. Amen. That's to prove to you that it has no respect to any man. There are issues of life that does not have respect to any man. Money cannot cure it. If leprosy happened to be a, respect, a respecter of any man, no man is not supposed to be a leper. Consider his position. Consider who he is. He's not supposed to be a leper. So when we talk about leprosy, he does not have respect to anyone. So he can come to anyone. You remember when Aaron and Maria, when they talked bad against Moses, Maria was a prophetess. But see, she was afflicted with what? Lepros. And immediately she was afflicted. And everybody saw they had to separate her from the camp. And put her to a camp where lepers belong to. Isolation. She was isolated. Hear me and hear me well. The moment you are being isolated, it means that you are being separated spiritually. Because she is unclean. When they say unclean, Holy Spirit cannot dwell with something that is unclean. It means totally you are being disconnected from the favor of God. There are questions back in your life that have disconnected you from God. They have disconnected you from the favor of God. You know, any question mark in your life, and when you remember it, you don't feel the joy of the Lord. You only feel sadness, you only feel rejection. Automatically, there is no favor of God reflecting in your life. I saw it. Leprosy was a sign of sin. Say sign of sin. Sign of sin. Now you need to change your life. That is why every question mark, you need to go to God. Only God has the solution. If it's a sin that your parents committed, if it's a sin that you mistakenly committed somewhere, this is a time for you to begin to ask God for forgiveness. Begin to ask God for restoration. Begin to ask God for cleansing. Let proceed according to law. It's a sign of what? Sin. When you are being afflicted with lepros, it means that you have sinned against God. You've done something wrong. According to law, that's how they consider it. And that's the reason why they need to separate you so that people will not contaminate the sin you've committed. Hallelujah. Amen. So that people will not want A sign of sin. Number five, leprosy deforms the beauty and defend the glory of God upon a man. Upon all the glory, upon all the beauty, upon all the goodness, upon all the position of Nehemiah, but still, leprosy defend the position. Let us 
for CEO. He said, count him. The CEO is a leper. He said, count him by position. The people look at him. He cover his body with blood. When he opens his body, he carries disease. Is there any glory of God there? No. Church. No. You see people, they have money. They have house. But their head is not sound. Where is the glory? I listen to a testimony. A man, a man that had a disease. And this man that had a disease, he has spent money all over, but the disease could not be cured. And he met him, Mother God, he said, I have a 20 million, he come and do something. And when the man of God went to pray for him, and God told him, don't pray for him. My heart is here, don't pray for him. There are many things money cannot solve for you. There are many things your wealth cannot secure for you. There are many people who have billions. They have everything. But still yet, they have a question mark in their life. And the question mark, their money, their wealth can never give answer to it. Question mark. So question mark is something that has to do with God. What shall it profit a man if he gets the whole world and loses his soul? What shall it profit you after you make money, you build a house, and you could not enjoy the house and enjoy the money? Question mark. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the word of God? Is somebody who never been born of God? Say, I am here in the presence of God. Question mark. Now I want us to go into some point for you to have an answer to a question mark in your life. Consider the following point. For you to have an answer. To a question mark in your life. Consider the following point. Number one point. Do not despise anyone. Don't despise people around you. Because when we say God is the only one that has an answer to a question mark in your life, people around you may be the God that is in our presence to give you an answer. Do you know that Nehemiah, who introduced Nehemiah to the prophet, a man and a slave that is serving in the kingdom? A maid. It was a maid. It was a slave that introduced Nehemiah. It was a slave that took Nehemiah. That there is a place that he can obtain healing of leprosy. In other words, he wanted to despise the little girl. And Nehemiah was thinking that he should be the king of Israel. From Syria, they are moving. And when he was preparing to go to Israel for healing of the lepros, he was thinking that he would take all the weight and everything as a gift to the man or to the king. When you read the place, the Bible recorded when he met the king, the king said, Who am I to heal you? Hallelujah. First of all, he listened to the little girl, to the maid and to the slave. Who is the slave to introduce a captain to the place of him? In order for a for his slave to talk to a captain, there should be a captain. Talk to counting. 
you are secret, you are question mark. Do not despise people like that people. Because somebody you despise tomorrow, somebody you despise today, may be an answer to your question mark tomorrow. Somebody you chase away from your circle, somebody you rejected, somebody you left out, somebody you neglected may be a solution to your destiny. Some people, when they occupy a position, they despise people around them. You know, they don't want people to talk to them. You know, they 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 they, they try to select some 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 certain people. They talk with, they relate with. You know, I hear a tone of statement that big man talk to big man. Hallelujah! And I'm going to tell you that in the kingdom of God, it's not like that. Because somebody you think that this is not a rich man, this is a slave. He might be the angel that God sent to him.
that's how God works. Yes. Don't despise people around you. Say, don't despise people around you. Slip there, introduce Neman. Slip there, introduce Neman to the place of his healing. Then number two, point what we should consider to have answer to every question mark. You must humble yourself before them. Like a child. Let someone give me the book of James, chapter 4, verse 10. You humble yourself, man of humility, a man of humble. You must always humble yourself, no matter your title, no matter your position, no matter your possession, no matter what you have, you must humble yourself. Let someone give me the book of James. Yes. Can you please start again? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. He said, he shall lift you up. Listen carefully. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. People are thinking that humble is not only when you want to pray, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, or when you go to pray, you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. When you say humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, it means humble yourself everywhere you find yourself. Humble yourself, even outside, even inside, in your home, in outside, in the sight of people. Humble your humility. If not because of the spirit of humble in the life of Neymar, Neymar would have despised the slave. He would have said, who are you to give me advice? Who are you to come to me and tell me this kind of thing? Who are you? Are you not scared? Irregardless of my position, are you not scared of my position? Are you not scared of where I am standing? Are you not scared of my title? Who are you to come and tell me this kind of thing? Humble yourself. The Bible said the book of this say, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he will do what? Lift you up. If you want an answer for all those question marks in your life, do what? Humble yourself. Humble yourself before me. Before people humble yourself. Anywhere you are, don't brag. Don't say, do you know who I am? Do you know what I have? What do you have? Who are you? Can you give guarantee of your life for a second? You have bread. The bread that you break, can you give a guarantee of it for a second? Do you know me? Do you know my position? Who gave you the position? Do you know what I have? Do you know the investment? Do you know how many things I have as an investment? Who gives you the investment? Who gives you the money? Some of you people, you boast in the midst of your friends. A rich child of God cannot boast in public. A rich child of God cannot begin to say, Do you know who I am? A rich child of God must humble himself. Even though people are bragging, you can have a not their chest be looking at them. That will make you different. That will make you greater than them. People want to show off. People want to tell you who they are. And after they use myself, I am this, I am that, I am this. After some years, they are no longer there. The story become I used to be. I used to drive five cars. I used to drive a cosmic car. In 2004, I used to be the manager of so 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 company. I used to be the director. In 2010, I used to be the what are you now? Your story become I used to. 
Every child of God cannot pray, cannot boast. Every child of God cannot use hand on matches in the public. Every child of God. Every child of God cannot argue with somebody concerning wealth and concerning who you are. Are you learning something? Say, I am learning something. Say, I am learning something. For the new God, I will answer for every question of mine. Humble. Humility. Humility is very important. In the book of Psalm chapter 18, verse 27, he said, For you send the humble people, but haughty eyes you bring down. God saved the humble people. He saved them. He saved them. He delivered them. And those who are not humble, God bring them down. So if you are such person, no matter the weight, no matter your position, no matter your investment, if you remain humble, your investment will remain forever. But if you remain proud, if you are not humble, he said, God said, I bring them down. It means that anywhere they are, I will do what? Bring them down. Say, but the humble, I do what? I lift them up. If you have been lifted up here, you humble more, God will lift you more. Uh, yeah. But if you are here, you do not humble, God will do what? That is why you always have the story I used to be. Humble. Say, I must humble myself. myself. Like your chair, say, I must humble myself. And I must humble myself before people and before God. Number three, take away ego and pride. 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 When the door of pride opened before a man, the door for a man to fall has been. You are hanging yourself with your hand on Your friend is driving a car. Because you are not driving, you begin to struggle. How are you going to rent a car so that you will be like your friend? <laughs> your friend is making it. Your turn has not come. Way to make sure that you be like your friend. And those who have received favor, you are thinking that only you that that favor is made for. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people today they are well and they are thinking that only me will be well, nobody will be well. Only me we get to this level. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some people they want to use their level to intimidate their friends. My level has changed. You begin to brag. And you begin to do all kinds of things that will make your friend to envy or to jealousy. Hallelujah. Some people, when they have money and their friend are they want to use money to intimidate their friends. True or not? True! True! Now, Facebook now is a way many people are intimidating their friends. They, they, they 
see they start getting frightening. They start getting frightening. And you keep on intimidating. Even though you don't have enough, they let you have, you, you begin to use it to intimidate them, intimidate others. It is what is happening. I tell you true. God gives you 20,000 to engage or 30,000 you want to use to intimidate others. You don't know that the person you are intimidating can get 500,000 to
How many of you Number four point. God will always have an answer to a question in our life. Every question in our life, God will always have an answer. Nehemiah was honorable to God and he said, a honorable man. And still yet God sent an angel. God sent Elijah. Do you know that something happened? Nehemiah wanted to fall. When he took all his gifts and the chariot and he traveled to the place of King. And after King told him that he is not God to heal, he do not have anything to do with him. And Elijah had, and they tried to introduce him to the prophet Elijah. And the neighbor was thinking that Elijah would call him to come and lay hand on him. But Elijah did not. Elijah sent message, tell him to go to River Shudan. Go to River Shudan. And River Jordan was not a clean river. There are many rivers near that area. There are many rivers that clean. And Elijah said, you must go to River Jordan. They must say, why don't you ask me to go to this river near here that is clean? Or even at this pool here to dip myself several times. Elijah sent the message. Go to River Judah. Thank God people around Nema. Nema wanted to consider his position. Nema wanted to consider who he is. Say, I am a captain. How can I dip myself into this unclean river seven times? But people around him can say him. And let him know that this is a prophet. And I believe when you complete this, dipping yourself seven times, you will have your healing. And Herman went to River Jordan and he was making an attempt to dip himself into the sea. And he looked at the river. I want to speak into your life that the ways of God are higher than our way. Your way and your thought are not the same like the thought of God. You may be thinking that at the left side is a way of prayer, but God said at the right side is a way. You may be thinking that we put down and the month of June is the time of your miracle. But God is speaking that next week is the week of the miracle. Someone here, I prophesy into your life. I speak God to us into your life. I said next week is a week of your miracle. Neymar, he looked at the water. And he deep inside the water, he deep inside, inside the water first time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, nothing could happen. Everybody was murdered. And on the seventh time, the body became clean. The Bible recorded that the body looked like a little child body. God is the God of miracles. Say, my God is a miracle working God. I say, my God is a miracle working God. I don't know the question mark in your life. God will give Neman solution. That God is giving someone solution here. Because you do not serve a dead God. You serve a living God. You serve a God that is the same yesterday. A God that is today. And a God that is forever. If you are here and you have a question mark in your life. And you want God to address it. Come here. God is going to address the question mark. I want to come here. I may not be able to lay hand on you. But I'm going to release a prophetic word into your life. Come here, lift up your hands and close your eyes. Masanda Kabrama Zoria Kanda Brahmali. I don't know the question mark in your life, but you know the question mark. You know the question mark. Never had an leprosy. A leprosy is an issue. It might be a special, it might be sickness, it might be issue of disease, it might be issue of sickness, it might be issue of setback. That you know that this is a question mark. It might be in your relationship, it might be in your marriage, it might be in your head. That is a question mark. I want to speak to God. I know that God will give you an answer. I know that God is a God. 